<laughs> this c of a game can go straight up an alien horse asshole and be shit out again. Good day everybody and welcome to VG News. This is Simon the Video Game Reporter coming at you live from Papoose Lake, Nevada, near the top secret United States military base Site 4. Now I bet you're wondering how we came across this base. Well, we have our ways. GPS. Anyways, this base seems to be completely abandoned, so there's absolutely no worries about us getting arrested. There have been reports that a group called the Coyotes have been spotted heading this way. These reports also reported that these Coyotes may be after some top secret weapons that are being stored here. Wait, what is that noise? Whoa, Nelly! Simon! Simon, what happened? Simon! Looks like we're going to have to call in the vigilantes. Tally homie mates, I'm Smackers and welcome to episode 2 of Just One Guy's Opinion. Last video I reviewed a game on the PS1 called Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Now if you want to see what score I gave that game, go click the link in this corner, it'll take you right there. But anyway, today's game is going to be very different to Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Whoop whoop! Boy howdy, it's the 70s again, and man am I excited for this one! Vigilante 8 was an awesome vehicular combat game on the PlayStation 1, and I enjoyed it immensely as a child. But how will it hold up today? That's what we're here to find out. Mm. I also just want to give a quick shout out to my good friend Josh from Statics J on YouTube. A while ago he did a interview on me and a couple of other YouTubers for his channel to just get his friends to have a bit more exposure. So go and give Statics J some well deserved attention. There's a link in the top right and also in the description to go and check out his channel. But what are we waiting for? Aliens to crash land on the earth? Well, Yes, actually. Let's get on with the review! Released in 1998, Vigilante 8 is a vehicular combat game developed by Luxoflux and published by Activision for the PS1, N64 and Game Boy Color. It was often thought of as a rival to the Twisted Metal series back in the day. The story of this game is quite simple. Well, it is when you look it up on Wikipedia because the game doesn't actually explain itself. It doesn't have a deep thought provoking plot like Inception, nor does it have any major plot twists like an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Basically, the game takes place in an alternate reality version of 1975 where the US economy is on the verge of breaking down. There is a global oil crisis and crime waves are breaking out across most cities across the world. Government officials situated security forces primarily in the cities to battle the crime waves, which is a good thing, but also isn't. Uh, well, surely positioning your security forces in locations where crime is happening at a high rate is power around to the safety of the innocent lives that reside in those cities. Yes, sure, but there are only so many members of the police force in the world, right? If all security forces are positioned in major cities, then what could possibly go wrong? Oh. My. God. Yep, you got it, didn't you? 
That means no more streaming movies online for free! Uh, no, that's illegal no matter what. The answer was areas outside the major cities are defenseless and have no law enforcement. Oh, that makes more sense. Thank goodness I won't have to miss out on my weekly viewing of Barbie of Swan Lake. Because there's no law and order out in the sticks or small towns anymore, a company called the Oil Monopoly Alliance Regime, or OMAR, are hell-bent on controlling the global petroleum market. But to do that, they want to destroy the US to ensure the success of their plan. For some reason. Omar employed a group of six villainous people known as the Coyotes to help them succeed in their plan, and fighting against them of six brave civilians who are taking the law into their own hands as the Vigilantes to stop the Coyotes and Omar. Vigilante 8 was created as a spin-off to the video game for Microsoft Windows called Interstate 76, with both games having pretty much the same storyline. Ongoing oil crisis, alternate history 1970s, civilians take up being vigilantes to stop evil group, etc. Each character also has their own little stories going on, which aren't very well explained as they're told through text in between stages. Each of the 12 character story modes have ending movies. For example, Dave from the Vigilantes is hell-bent on finding UFOs and the existence of aliens. His ending movie has him find a UFO that he was tracking. You get eight characters to play as from the beginning and have to complete their story modes one by one to unlock more characters characters and stages. This in-game chart here explains whose stories you need to complete to be able to unlock something new. You will not unlock these characters just by completing the story modes however. No, 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 it's not that simple. Nothing's ever that simple. You gotta complete specific missions on every level to fully complete a character's story. These missions are either to protect a building as a vigilante or destroy a building as a coyote. But it's much easier as a coyote because destroying buildings is simple. Hunt it out at the beginning and you sort it. But defending as a vigilante? is much more difficult, as you have multiple enemies to keep away from the target for the entirety of the level. Plus, if you accidentally destroy it yourself, you're screwed. The text and the picture shown before a mission begins shows you what exactly you need to protect or destroy. But if you forget or skip ahead too quick without looking properly, there is absolutely no way to double check what your objective is, which I think is a load of sh** because then you have to restart the entire level. Same with if you're a vigilante. You're that close to beating your final opponent, but he just destroyed the target building. Sorry mate, you gotta hit that restart button and do that level all over again. Each character's story mode includes four levels, and each level increases the number of enemies you have to fight. Level one has you face off against one member of the opposing faction. Stage two has you fight two, etc. The final stage has you fight three, but then a fourth, more powerful enemy comes along and gives you a lot of grief. Probably one of the most saddest and impactful storylines, however, is the coyote named Houston 3. She was once a normal woman named Tanya, but was kidnapped by Omar and experimented on. Apparently, Omar don't just specialise in oil, but also in cybernetics, as they transformed her from a human into a cyborg against her will, and is also under mind control. This storyline actually made me feel sorry for the character, as when you complete a mission with her, her winning words are... Program complete, baby. Why am I doing this? I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm so sorry, Tanya, that you have to go through this and this happened to you. I'm, I'm sorry. Whilst the Twisted Metal series pretty much always crushed the Vigilante 8 series in most people's eyes, there's just something about this game which always made it stand out to me. High octane, thrilling, fast paced, exhilarating, exciting and explosive action. Boom, boom, boom! That's what this game is all about. If you're not already busy plowing headfirst into your opponent, you're shooting missile after missile at their vehicle's chassis to cause extreme damage, not just to their car, but to their pride as well. Using deadly United States secret weapons stolen from the Site 4 base in Nevada, you must play your opponents at their own game and demolish them once and for all. Rockets, cannons, mortars, mines, missiles and special unique weapons are at your disposal, as well as at your opponents. These weapons are found randomly generated across the stage and you can only hold three weapons at a time. But if you have three and pick up another, you'll drop the one you had currently selected. You can pick it up again if you're quick, but if it's a special weapon that you dropped, you're screwed because you can't get those back. Alongside these limited, more powerful weapons, you have the unlimited, weaker machine guns equipped to the front of your vehicle. These aren't very damaging, unless you manage to get your opponent stuck against a wall or something and wail on them for a while. Each of the weapon pickups have three special weapon combos that can be used, except for the unique special weapon. For example, by inputting up, up, up on the D-pad and then pressing the machine gun trigger with the missiles equipped, 
you get a speed boost to help get away from enemies or jump over bigger gaps. And pressing down down up trigger with the mortar equipped launches a crater creating mortar and so on and so on. These special weapons often cause more damage or debilitate your enemy in different ways. The game itself does not teach you about these weapon combos, so you have to learn about them yourself. However, your car's horn goes off when your weapon combo input is successful. Each character has special weapons which are unique to them. These special weapons can be obtained randomly in a random weapon crate, or can be guaranteed in the more rare, green, special weapons crates. You'll also notice these crates are the ones that the coyote stole in the intro movie. As you can expect, these specials are the strongest weapons in the game, but they all have their own reasons for being OP hacks. Chassis Blue special stalls the opponent's vehicles and deals a little damage, while Slick Clyde's lightning bolts aren't very accurate, but can deal quite a bit of damage and can sometimes stall the opponent. There are also special power-ups on the battlefield that you and your enemies can pick up to help turn the tides of war. The wrench power-up is your best friend in this f***ed up world. The respawn on these wrenches is quite uncommon, so use them wisely. I'd marry the wrench if I could, so that it could never leave me again. Oh, wrench. You were always there for me when I needed you the most. You were there to look after me and bring my health back up again. I remember the first day we met just like it was yesterday. Uh, sorry, do you mind if I sit down? Thank you. I've been jogging for two hours straight. Whew. Hey, did you hear about the runner who ran for three hours but only moved two feet? Well, he only had two feet. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, come on, that was one of my best jokes. All right, see if you can do any better. <laughs> they both use drills. Oh my God, you are so funny. And then, that incident happened. It was the worst day of my life. I've, I've never met someone so amazing as you. For the first time in my life, I feel like I've met someone literally perfect. You're beautiful. You always make me laugh with your silly jokes. Plus you have really nice curves. You've made my life worth something. I'd be lost without you and, well, I've been doing a lot of thinking. And we've been going out for a while now, so I thought this was the perfect time. It's been a long time coming. Oh, there you are. Been lucky for you. Oh. No, great. No! What are you Jeez. doing? Excellent. See you later, mate. No! What are you doing? Come back! Bring her back! <laughs> Life has never been the same since. I've always vowed to never let someone steal someone's beloved wrench again. Anyway, enough mopey bullshit, let's get back to the game. Ah! 
there are 8 decently sized stages to play on, as well as 2 unlockable stages. The Nintendo 64 version includes an extra level called Super Dreamland 64, designed in a colourful, more childlike fashion to highlight the juxtaposition of a violent game being on a console, home predominantly to games more aimed at kids. The stages themselves aren't huge, but for the PS1 they are decently sized for 4 vehicles to battle it out all at once. Each stage is home to their own hazards as well, some of which are player activated. Take the airfield for example. You can call in a bomber plane to drop bombs on the opposing vehicles by driving under this wire. Now let's talk about the HUD for a moment. In the top left, you have a radar. Red dots are enemy vehicles which aren't currently being targeted. The green dot is the vehicle you are currently targeting, and the centre of the radar is your current position. The weapons area at the top here shows how many weapons you have, which one you have selected, and how much ammo you have left for it. The bar in the top right is your current health, and the bar in the bottom left is the targeted vehicle's remaining health. The select button also sets the view to a first person view, which has a strangely good attention to detail. Sid Byrne wears bandages on his hands on the character select screen, but also in this first person view you can see the bandages on his hands as he holds the wheel. Every character's hands and wheel seem to match up with their appearance and car quite nicely, which is a nice little detail they added. Along with the quest mode there's an arcade mode where you can freely select a character to play as, any stage, and also have free roam to choose up to 4 opponents. The game also has a 2 player mode which lets you team up with a friend, or battle them in versus mode. But I don't have any friends so I won't be showing you those modes. You'll also notice that not only can you be teleported across the map by strange light rays from the sky on certain levels, or by jumping in the water and coming out of big ass tubes at Hoover Dam, but you can also destroy a lot of the buildings and environments in the game, such as fences, boulders, or even aim higher by destroying f***ing helicopters. At the end of every quest mode stage, you will get this stat screen which tells you how shitty you did. The rating doesn't really mean crap, as long as you killed the opponents and either protected or destroyed the objective target, you're all good. During this screen, the character you play as will also say a certain line. If you lose, it'll be a disappointed line, and if you win, it'll be a triumphant line. Oh no, I think I broke a nail. I think you broke more than a nail, love. Though the gameplay may be addictive, the graphics for this game are not so great to look at. You often see bits of the landscape or vehicles flashing in and out of existence, especially the backgrounds. Plus, I also feel like the vehicles look quite choppy at times too. I would say it's due to the limitations of the PlayStation 1, but other games like Crash Bandicoot didn't seem to have the issues of flickering graphics. Choppy models may be slightly, but not this bad. I mean, yes, it most likely was the limitations of the PlayStation 1 that caused this, but the sequel to this game, titled Vigilante 8 Second Defense, it seemed to improved quite a bit on the graphical bugs, at least in my opinion. It wasn't as choppy, and the graphics weren't flashing in and out as much. Now don't get me wrong, I like how the game looks, I just think it could have been refined a lot more. The sound for this game is probably one of my favourite aspects of all. You have multiple different tracks in this game to listen to as you fight. Some more funky, some more heavy metal or punk. What's a car destruction game without a cool ass CD in the radio? I also like how the PS1 version allows you to open the console and replace the game disc with a music CD, which lets the player listen to their own music as they continue the level. I have a pen. I have an apple. Um, okay, next track. Your mission in each level is to arrest the bad guy. The audio recordings of the characters' lines are a bit low quality, but not disastrous. But the sounds of the weapons going off can be quite overbearing, especially when you activate special attacks for the missiles. Overall, I like the sound in this game, especially the music tracks. The controls are mapped out in a simple, understandable manner. X is accelerate, square is to break, L2 fires weapons and R2 fires your machine gun, etc. Now, I actually wouldn't say this game has too many glitches, I'd just say it has a few little occurrences. To explain, we're going to go back to Papoose Lake, Nevada and speak to Simon, the video game reporter. Simon? S simon are you there? What happened to Simon? Looks like those shitty coyotes got to this poor lad. Yes, that stab wound was definitely done by those c**ts. Their cars must come equipped with f***ing butcher knives or some crap. Rest in peace and all that sh**. Anyway, what the f*** are you going on about? I kinda fell asleep after stabbing Simon. I mean after watching Simon getting stabbed, so I have no goddamn f***ing clue what game you're even reviewing. It's... 
It's vi it's Vigilante 8 for the PlayStation 1. Ah, that steaming pile of glitchy c***ing s***s. I've produced less s***s than that game has glitches. I've seen better vehicular combat in Final Fantasy f***ing 15. And you can barely f***ing drive in that game. The f***ing Reliant Robin has a better design than most of these f***ed up pieces of s*** that you call badass cars. Some of them aren't even cars. One character drives a mother f***ing school bus. It's not even a car game. It's a f***ing anything goes game. I mean come the f*** on. A UFO? Seriously? And they couldn't even go for a f***ing badass UFO design. No, they went for the shitty flying saucer style design with a big headed f***ing alien that we've seen a million goddamn times. What is this? Mars attacks vehicular combat? F*** off mate, I might as well take that f***ing UFO for myself and fly to a different f***ing planet to get away from the shit on this 12,742km sphere of fail and disappointment. So, did you want something? Um, yeah, I was gonna ask Simon to talk about the glitches in this game, but... Ah, perfect. Allow me. But it was Simon's job to talk about the glitches Well, and... he's f***ing dead, isn't he? So f*** off, and let me f***ing beat on this game like a stellar drinking husband. Swears like a drooper and he f***s all the holes. You know he means business when he tell you how it goes. He'll tell you how you f*** and how you never do right. He'll shoot you in the nuts if you get in a fight with... Willy monkey! For starters, the graphics aren't majorly bad, but look at the f***ing background flashing in and out of existence. What the f*** is that sh**? Waiting for the graphics to stabilize is like waiting for the female orgasm. Also, could someone please tell me what the f*** is going on here? Now I've seen a lot of porn, but this is better than most of it. Oh yeah baby. This game doesn't just have some graphical glitches, but actual f***ing gameplay glitches that send your car flying into f***ing space. I didn't realize Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was in this game with being able to f***ing fly. Boy mate, claims aren't allowed in this car game. Go back to your own game. If you didn't think video game genre racism was a thing, well I just f***ing made it a thing. What would it be called? Genreism? Sure why not? Also this guy got f***ing launched into a building, and vanished off the face of the earth. Smackers is targeting him and shooting him, but he's nowhere to be f***ing found. The game is so f***ing glitchy, but overall it is actually quite a fun game to play, especially with friends. Which I would know about, because I have loads of f***ing friends unlike somebody I won't mention. This isn't a glitch, but can we just talk about the unique special weapons for a second? Molo who drives the school bus has a special weapon where he releases black smoke from the bus's exhaust pipe. Look at this f***ing damage, okay. Look the f*** at it. What the f*** kind of weapon is that? Why the f*** has the fat good for nothing idiot who can't even get a proper f***ing job with a coyote's got the strongest f***ing weapon. Plus it f***ing stalls enemies. What the tits. A cool thing of this game however is that character stories will sometimes intertwine. Loki from the Coyotes fights Dave from the Vigilantes in the last stage of his story, and Dave meets Loki at the end of his story too. On the same level. That's pretty f***ing decent for a game like this to have such continuity and rivalries. One more thing, not a glitch, and Smack has mentioned this slightly before, but once you beat every one story modes with all the objectives complete, you unlock a secret character. A f***ing alien. A. F***ing. Alien. Why the f*** have an alien in this game when it's about a global oil crisis in the 70s? It makes no f***ing sense. The character doesn't even have a f***ing story mode. Well, he does on the Nintendo 64 version, but not on the PlayStation, which is f***ing weird. Plus his name is f***ing Why the Alien. Why the Alien? That is my exact f***ing question. F***ing why? I rate this game a f***ing 2 out of 5 nanas. Hey, if smackers can rate games, then so can I. After all, this is my f***ing channel too. Even if it is f***ing dead. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go hide this body. Back to you dickhead. Rest in peace Simon. You were a lovable, fun, informative guy. They did get on my nerves sometimes. 
with your stupid accent and how f***ing long it took to edit you into videos. Anyway mates, just a reminder that my rating system works in smacks. The higher the number, the more smacks the game deserves. I guess you could call it the naughty meter. So, my final verdict on this game. It was a game I put hours into as a kid, but it's not a game that really captivated me. There's little to no character development in the game other than maybe one or two here and there, such as Houston 3, and the game is very repetitive. It's a fun game to play for a couple of hours, but it does get boring after a while. Nevertheless, I love this game, and it's got a lot of nostalgia there for me. Also, I probably should mention, Lux and Flux ended up getting shut down in 2010, and the original founders went on to create a new studio called Isopod Labs. And then later on, they announced a new version of Vigilante 8 for Xbox Live Arcade, simply titled Vigilante 8 Arcade very original. This game had updated graphics but had some changes. Most, if not all, the car designs have been changed, plus certain characters such as Houston 3, Loki and Sheila were not included in the game. They came later on in the DLC pack. The arcade version was a blast from the past and it had mixed reviews, but it didn't really captivate me, I didn't really enjoy it as much as the original. Speaking of the original, I'm going right back to it and I'm going to give my final verdict. I give this game a 5 out of 10 smacks. I can't be biased. Just because I love this game as a kid doesn't mean I can sing its praises. I've got to be fair and I've got to think critically. So that's my final verdict for the game. It's nowhere near a perfect game. I'd still say the Twisted Metal series is a better car destruction game, but it's definitely fun with friends. So now I just want to say thank you all so much for watching this review. I know I said in the last one that future reviews would be shorter, uh, but I kind of got a bit carried away with this one. <laughs> I'll still try and bring the length of them down in future. Nevertheless, I really hope you all enjoyed this video, guys. Have you ever played Vigilante 8? Did you enjoy it? Or is this your first time seeing the game? Write me a comment down below and let me know what you think of this game. Did you enjoy this review? Did you enjoy watching me have my heart broken? Did you enjoy watching me have my love taken away from me? <laughs> Leave a like on the video down below to let me know. Herder, can we get 10 likes? 10 likes and I'll release the next video. I know it took me a long time to release this video compared to the last one. There's a good two or three months in between there, but I have no excuse other than I work in retail and it's the Christmas period. Shoot me. But really, thank you all so much for watching. I love you all. Bye for now. Let's report the news! <coughs> Dying. Dying. We're here live at Papoose Lake, Nevada, where the. the oh, frick off. There's been reports of a. Uh, f off. These reports also reported that these coyotes may be after some tops. These reports. <coughs> <coughs> That's how you do a broadcast. <laughs> oh yeah! Vigilante 8 on the PlayStation 1 was an amazing vehicular combat game. <laughs> Vigilante 8 was an amazing... Yes, that's it. It was an amazing. It's a good map. Mm -hmm. I've been jogging for two hours straight. <laughs> yeah, you look at me. <laughs> you look at me. <laughs> Lift this up because this will be on 100 views on YouTube at this rate. It's not even on YouTube yet at this point of recording. Hey! This is an Easter egg. <laughs> this is a blooper. Just my nails. This is a blooper, everyone. Rubbish chin. Oh, sorry. I thought you'd uh, force choking nah. me like uh, a <laughs> like shot. <laughs> hey, did you hear about the runner who ran for two hours straight? That's not the joke. That's what <laughs> I did. That's not the joke. That's what I did. Although this is a bit of a joke. Hey, did you hear about the runner who ran for three zips? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, turkey gibberish gibble snots. Yeah, I know, right? I agree. It's so good. I, I really like it. I like jerky, jerky, beef jerky. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. <laughs> I've never met someone so amazing as you. Uh, 
I've, I've never met someone so amazing as you. <laughs> All right, Tweety Bird. Yeah, busy tweeting. No! No! Bring it back! You were always there to bring my health back off. Oh, To explain, we're going to go back to Papoose Lake, Nevada to talk about Simon. Oh, to talk about Simon. Ugh. Hello, you dumb! Shut up, cat. Oh, wait, that was me. I do not regret deciding to do a blooper reel every video. <laughs>